Good morning from a very, very busy morning here at Mirabolandia on the east coast of Italy. I'll talk more about where the park exactly is and how to get here at the end of the video. Well, let's first, let's head in. Uh, like I said, it's a crowded day here, so uh, gotta start checking things off the to-do list nice and fast. Cool entrance here, you walk in and uh, giant like castle, playing like pirate style music. You might be able to hear it in the background of the video, but this entrance plaza is booming with music. Like this is the loudest entrance plaza I think I've ever heard in a theme park. But uh, first impressions, uh, really cool theme. Uh, really uh, leading into pirate, a lot of pirate like photo uh, ops, but really cool uh, decor. Like stained glass window up there. So uh, good first impression. Love, loving the pirate thing. That's a theme you don't see at every park, so uh, that, that makes it a little bit unique. We immediately headed to the back of the park here. It's a whole motorcycle area. Because Flash Pass gets you on a lot of rides, it's a pretty good deal, but it does not get you on this powered coaster back here. Well, we made it all the way to the back of the park only to find out that this ride's only open from two o'clock to nine o'clock. Interesting. Super hyped to ride high speed. This intimate launch coaster gets really great reviews. One of those few rides that living in the US, uh, you hear a lot about. It's, uh, don't know much about it. I, I uh, know it's great, that's about it. But I, I see a corkscrew there. Decent sized top hat over here. We're gonna go check this ride out. What the entrance plaza? Right, ends with like a small break run there before diving into this nice little airtime hill. Rides 180 feet tall, goes from zero to 68. It's basically the Italian Maverick, though I would say not as uh, whippy as Maverick. Couple inversions, overall pretty good, but still has the old style Maverick restraints that uh, just don't do uh, a lot of favors for your head with these tight turns. The park has a log flume themed to cars. I don't think I've ever seen this. It has a cool little double, double dip on the drop there. But themed to like these like retro 50 looking cars. That's not something you see every day. Dive Vertical. This ride opened in 2012. And it's probably one of the main reasons I wanted to come here. This crazy intimate water ride is like the biggest in the world. See that crazy drop there? And then it just barely touches the water there and, and it goes full force through here. I thought it was going to slow down in the brake run. Nope, just plows right through that mid-course brakes. And uh, this is where you get wet. I am not a huge water ride guy, but the water rides I've been on, this. Get, got me the absolute most wet, which for a sunny day here in Italy in the summer, not too bad. But this ride is just absolutely bonkers. Uh, you can see it has the vertical elevator lift. Uh, I don't know what it is with water rides. Let me know in the comments. Uh, you know, this ride's only like 150 feet so or tall but it feels really high and really scary. I don't know why water rides always feel more scary. Again, you just barely get wet there. And I was not prepared for how fast you go around this roller coaster section over here. That was, that was quite crazy. So really unique ride. I know they tried to build, you know, uh, Pilgrim's Plunge and that didn't quite work. Um, but which more parks would get these like water coaster things? Good to see like power splashes and stuff coming up 
a different manufacturer, but still, look at that. Yeah, it's just, but like I said, it's, it's awesome. Station uses a conveyor belt loading system for a water ride. It actually has pretty good capacity. Uh, I think they're running like three or four boats uh, at all times. And uh, I mean, pretty much as soon as this boat gets loaded, the next one, I see the splash happy in the background there. That one's about to come up. So, I mean, they're constantly putting, uh, what is that? Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten people on this ride every about 25 seconds. The line is quite long. It's early, but uh, it's right next to a water park, which I really like when parks put their giant, really wet water ride next to their water park, which you get to right over there. Uh, it does take the uh, flash pass, so that was uh, a nice win right there. The entrance and uh, theming is good. quite extensive. This might be the coolest looking B&M uh, break run I've seen. Look at that. Cantoon, I think that's how you say it. As a Cedar Point fanboy, this ride makes me very happy because the ride is essentially Raptor. The Raptor layout, just taller, faster, steeper, has a little bit more curves to it, like the Cobra Roll instead of being straight back that way, it curves behind the trees over there. A lot more theming. So it takes the best of Raptor because I do think Raptor has a great layout and just really, really improves on it. Uh, the mid course doesn't hit very hard, which is awesome. It's a big thumbs up from uh, from me. Say come through the trees over there. Adventurers Master Tie. It's like a dueling wild mouse kind of ride. That's a cool station at the very least. Let's go check it out. The park has this really cool automated grouper thing. Has a number there and lights up green and so you know how many people have come through to come up into the station. And then all the rides, uh bring any little thing. Like I said, uh, like a racing wild mouse. Very unique. So that was interesting. It's incredibly short, but it's a Mobius coaster. So you start on one side, you go through, you come back to the station and we're like, oh crap, do I have to go on the other side to get the credit? No, they, they send you through again. For all you credit hunters out there. It's a nice bonus. Ferris wheel is in the back of the park and it is I believe, the second tallest in Europe. It's very, very tall and moves very very slow like I'm gonna stop for a second you can barely even tell it's moving but it is so uh, hopefully you just go around once or that could take up the whole day As we wait for the racing coaster to open, Dismo Race, worth noting the other ride in this area is also closed. Not a good look. I, if you're a Ducati uh, motorcycles, not a good look out probably for you guys. Uh, not their fault probably, but two of the rides in your uh, cool looking area, not running. Um, but it, it is a nice area. It's just so all in the sun. Check back in in a few minutes. Hopefully, uh, the racing coaster opens. It's not on Flash Pass, so uh, that's why we're uh, keeping a quick eye on the line here because two people per car. Yeah, you can do the math with capacity. 
inside the uh, building I was just showing off. Uh, they do have a couple simulators, a bunch of motorcycles on display, a giant racing game. Definitely, uh, if you've ever been to Ferrari Land, Ferrari World, either of those parks, it's like a miniature version of that. Got the Paddock Club uh, restaurant here. It's a neat concept, uh, you know, to bring in a brand like this. Just wish uh, the two kind of major rides in the area were uh, opening or open all day. Two o'clock on the dot and it has opened. Already has quite a bit of line building up. So I'm glad we stuck it out and waited. Between them testing it a few minutes before two o'clock and them loading the line at two o'clock, it broke down. Uh, it's down for the first 20 minutes or so. So it's almost 2.30 now. And this line's not very shaded. So it's been a little bit brutal. Uh, but we are now walking up to the platform. Ride was a lot of fun. Uh, definitely, uh, it, you know, bigger, faster, crazier than the one on the Carnival Mardi Gras boat cruise ship. Uh, we have a full video of that on the, on the channel. They don't always race. You can see here, they're uh, huh. actually those two are pretty close. They actually have quite. A, they get pretty close on the track, uh, and that's a really steep turn coming down there. Uh, see how how heavily banked that is. So the ride it doesn't have brake capacity, but I mean, there's probably like two or three on the circuit at once. It's just a little bit tricky to load, but this whole like kind of helix thing here in the back, pretty cool. So uh, it gets a thumbs up uh, from me. Here, here it comes again, show a little bit more footage. Just uh, need to figure out the reliability and the capacity. I, I give them credit for building two of these. Uh, helps the capacity for sure. The number of nerd, I like this uh, counts down how many seats are left by when you go through the turnstiles right here. I put out the call on our Instagram, Shameless Plug, in the Moon Podcast on Instagram, what I should see when I'm at the park. Everyone kept saying, go see the Hot Wheels show. It's really cool. So here we are, and uh, probably won't understand much of it because it'll probably be in Italian, so I'll insert a couple highlights. So I'm going to try to give you the recap from what we can understand. This bad guy looks like a Bond villain shows up with some of his henchmen, has some weird kind of flavored liquid stuff, maybe NOS or something to, to get the cars going. Don't really know. He starts showing off all his henchmen like, oh, cool, look what I can do all the, with all these car tricks and just keep going around in circles and circles. But wait, you knew the cops were going to show up. This villain wasn't going to get away with it. Though the cops not taking the most direct route, which made me a little suspicious. Like, does this guy really want to catch the bad guy? But... Eventually, they did kind of corner him in, but they don't really run right after him. It seems like he starts finding ways to talk his way out of this ticket. You know, smooth-talking villain here is going to try to outsmart the cops because, like, he's commanding the audience right now. The cops don't even care, and the cops start pulling away. What is this? Then he starts, like, showing off. He starts, like, hey, look, my henchman guy can do all this fun stuff. If he keeps going around in circles, can I get out of my ticket? And he just kept showing off. The rest of the show was the villain guy just showing off the cops going, hey, look, look what my guys can do. And, I, you know, I think it kind of worked because by the end, the cars come in place and the villain guy just walked freely. It was a little strange. Disappointing thing was behind that huge curtain there and all the advertisements, they showed a giant Hot Wheels 360 loop that like plugged into those two orange things there. I kept waiting for that to come out at the end, but it never did. Park has a very uh, kind of standard wild mouse seen to uh, the gold rush. Nothing too uh, unique or special about this ride. It's kind of like buried in the back of the park though. Uh, I think that's good because it keeps the line short. 
probably the coolest thing about that wild mouse is they took these old cars from it and made it look abandoned out in, out in front of the ride. Pretty cool. The bark does have an upcharge walking dead walk through. I'm not a haunt guy, so I, I didn't do it. So, uh, what's the walking dead? You can probably figure out what's, what it is. Not sure there is a, such a thing, but if there was a book called How to Build a Theme Park, pretty sure chapter one is it must have a western town. I mean, every park has a western town. Pretty decent theme, though. The park does have two SNS towers. Actually, uh, fairly small. Let's see if I can pan up with the sun blocking it. Oh, uh, there we go. Maybe 100, 150 feet at most. You never really see them in like a tube configuration either. So that's interesting. And then also in the Western area, they have one of these Zamperla discos. I'll let you do get out in the comments if you think this is a coaster or not. Coaster dash count says yes. RCDP says no. So I'm not sure who to believe. Tell me in the comments, it's a coaster or not. The right hand side of the entrance is Dino Land, not USA, just Dino Land. It's kind of a fun theme. Dino Pizza Time. You got the giant dinosaur, you got a nest up there. We have also learned here in Italy, uh, you'll make fun of me if you've been to here before. The word bar usually just, just means coffee, it does not mean does not always mean, sometimes it does, does not always mean booze. Uh, that has been deceiving. This looks like quite the ride over here. It's like you ride in the grip of claws of uh, the dinosaur. More theming in Dino Land, not USA. They have this little monorail that should be popping around the corner here any second now. <laughs> That's uh, dinosaur themed. Check this out. I didn't type it perfectly, so you have to wait a second here, but it's worth the wait. Look at this. It's like a hatching dino. That's pretty cool. They have these little tiny cars for uh, kids. I said seven to 13 years old, I believe. It's weird to film kids on a ride by themselves, so showing you the half side that is closed. Oh, neat little uh, ride for kids. Plus, some pretty cool theming. Nice attention to detail with the uh, trash cans here in Dino Land, not USA. The park does have this big lagoon area where they do some shows at night. Unfortunately, it's not in our plans to stay here that, that late. But it's also worth noting that in Europe, where a lot of the parks do close somewhat early, uh, this park is open. Uh, it's a Friday to 1130 and during the week here in late August to 10 o'clock. So uh, they also have an evening ticket. So it's one of those things that uh, maybe you bought the evening ticket, you could splurge for the fast uh, flash pass. And I still think you'd be able to do everything. Here's the kids themed area. You have a couple kids rides as well as some playground equipment. The Santa Fe Express over here, miniature train. Not a huge kids area, just you know, about three or four rides with the playground, but enough to keep the kids occupied. And there's kids rides spread around the park. So if you are taking the family here, it's not like you have to just stay in one area all day. Now this is our ride, been to a lot of parks. I've never seen a ride in the shape of a house, a weird looking crazy house that spins and does stuff like this. It's in the kids section, mind you. Heading back through the pirates section, which means we are wrapping our day up here. But before I do my final wrap up, I'm going to take a moment to share how we got here and kind of where the park is exactly. The park is located near a city called Ravenna, about an hour and a half south of Venice on Italy's east coast. Now you're going to be hearing a lot more about this city in the upcoming years because cruise ships are no longer allowed to dock in Venice. So Ravenna is the port where most of them are moving towards as they're kind of their starting or ending point for the eastern Mediterranean cruises. That's why we are in Ravenna. 
Now, to get to the park, we took a cab from downtown Ravenna to the, uh, the park and back. It was about 15, 20 euros each way. There was a city bus for about five euros that picked up right outside the park here. Now, just for a quick reference, if you're on a cruise starting or ending in Ravenna, or maybe you have a port day here and you want to check out Mirablandia, on the ship right now, you can faintly make out the giant, giant Ferris wheel off in the distance, probably about a 30 minute cab ride from the port. Uh, Cause the port's a little bit removed from town. You gotta spend about 15 minutes navigating out of this very industrial port. And then kind of once you get to Ravenna, it's about 10, 15 minutes. Over to Mirablandia. Overall, really enjoyed the park uh, as evidenced by uh, this entrance plaza here. Uh, the park is uh, pretty well themed, uh, maintained really well and has a nice selection of rides. I think it was only around $30 to get in, so definitely, definitely can't beat that value. But yeah, the theming sticks out for me. Divertica, not even a water ride guy, but I really like that ride. That was really fun. Uh, High Speed, another great ride. Inver was great. The park gets a thumbs up for me having some top tier rides as well as looking really good too. So uh, thanks for watching.